you've probably heard of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo. But did you know that these cartoon characters are actually named after four prominent artists in the Renaissance? So the Renaissance is going to be caused by a number of things. For one, we have new information coming into Europe through conquests, through the Crusades, through wars. And remember when we talked about the Crusades, we have a lot of knowledge from the Muslim world coming into Europe. And remember, the Muslims preserved all of those Greek and Roman um, pieces of literature, all those Greek and Roman um, pieces of history, art, and so all of those are going to make their way back to Europe through the Crusades. We also see information coming in through trade, through trade with the Ottoman Empire, the Mongol Empire, North Africa. The Italian Renaissance is going to be the first stage of the Renaissance, and the reason that it starts in Italy is because Italy was the center of trade. Now remember we don't have a united Italy at this time, we have a different Italian states, but the Italian states were centers of trade and they had a lot of money and so they could afford to pay artists to paint things. You know, they weren't so focused on just surviving. They had a lot more money to be able to do these types of things. One movement that goes along with the Renaissance is humanism. And we see this in Renaissance art, for example, where they glorify the human body. Humanism basically is glorification of human life. So again, in art you see it in the human body, in literature you see it in the glorification of individual people. Um, in civic humanism you see it where all lives have meaning, whereas before the serfs were disposable because there were so many of them and people really didn't think their lives mattered if they were serfs and the nobility definitely didn't think the lives of the serfs mattered very much. But now each person has a soul, each person is valuable in their own individual way. Before we get to art, a piece of literature you need to know is Machiavelli's The Prince. And in The Prince, Niccolo Machiavelli outlines how to be a good ruler. And this piece of literature was used during that time and has been used since on how to be a good leader. So lots of presidents have read The Prince. And I'm going to include a documentary in the playlist that talks about the prince and how you can see the ideas of the prince still reflected in modern society. Okay, let's get to art. And remember, this is a very condensed version of Renaissance art. You can take whole courses over Renaissance art. We're going to start with the Italian Renaissance. It's the first stage of the Renaissance. It takes place mostly in Italy. It's going to be known as the Southern Renaissance as well. And the Italian Renaissance, you see humanism, you see the emphasis of human form, you tend to see lighter colors, and you have secular paintings as well as religious paintings, whereas before, paintings were mainly religious. Again, our four main artists are going to be Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Donatello. And some famous pieces of art, um, da Vinci's Last Supper and Mona Lisa, um, Michelangelo's The Sistine Chapel, which he painted upside down, like laid in a hammock a hundred feet up and could have falled if he rolled over wrong and spent hours painting on his back. I mean, just wow. Um, Donatello, who did a sculpture of David, and a lot of people are going to do sculptures of David, and by David I mean King David in the Bible. And Raphael, who did a fresco called The City of Athens. And a fresco is basically just a fancy word for painting on a wall. The second phase of the Renaissance is the Northern Renaissance. And in the Northern Renaissance, we see that the paintings are much darker, use much darker colors. We see that they are more religious. And a lot of them are going to be pictures of monarchs. Because in Italy, we had rich individuals from trading that would commission these pieces of art. But in Northern Europe, most of the pieces of art are going to be commissioned by kings, and so they're going to be either self-portraits or portraits of the family. Um, an example is when King Henry VIII was going through his wives. There wasn't, you know, photography back then, and so to get an idea of what his future wife would look like, he would commission an artist to go and paint her. And this particular example is um, Anne of Cleves. He would send an artist over to Germany to paint Anne of Cleves and then send it back and I'll get to a story about Anne of Cleves and more when we get to um, the English Reformation. The Northern European 
artists, artists well known. Um, one is John Van Eek, but um, they still are great artists. And if you're interested in this, I encourage you to either look it up some more or take a course in art history or European history. In my Piero class, I spend a lot more time talking about Renaissance art. But again, we have the whole history of the world to cover, so we're condensing this a little bit. So the Renaissance is a coming back of all of these Greek and Roman ideas. Renaissance means rebirth, and we're going to see these Greek and Roman ideas plant themselves in European society, and we're going to see the effects they take in the Reformation and in changes we see in governments later on in period four. Next time, we'll start with the Reformation. I'll see you then.